Hey, what's up guys? Another episode of Pat Taste of Formers and the drive where we have our beloved Toro Time Master that is far from stock from when it first came out. We absolutely seen on this channel full transparency through all its quirks and gimmicks. This is one of the best push mowers money could buy. Here is a new cut I decided to do this year. I always thought it'd be too big for my lawn and it is the best cut. So whatever perks and gimmicks that I have on this channel, it is all worth it. The last thing I want to work out is a little bit of a side quest for me. As you can see, I have some stuff here. Okay, the electric start. This is the one reason why I love the Toro Time Master. The one reason why, when I get rid of the original motor for something more powerful, I still stuck with the Briggs because no other variant has electric start. I do not want to pull start on one mower. I pull start everybody else's stuff. The last thing I want to do is pull start my own stuff. So Toro buries the battery inside this cowling right here. Okay, I can only get two years out of a battery. I have not tried the EGM variant quite frankly, because I am just too cheap. In order to access the battery, you have to pull all these bolts off to get to it. And it is quite annoying. So I said, you know what? I don't know how batteries like, you know, work in a sense, but as you guys can see here, I have an M12 adapter. We love our Milwaukee M12 tools here on this channel. I use them all the time. And you guys even seen my half inch impact will take off all the lug nuts on all these cars. And I said, you know what, how hard, like if it has this much power to remove lug nuts, it can have enough power to start a lawnmower. Oh, this locks it in. I couldn't have been so wrong in my entire life. This is the M12. If this is a four amp hour, the four amp hour will not start this lawnmower. The six amp hour will start the lawnmower, but it's gonna take a little bit. And that is something I have no interest in. I want to turn the key, just like a car, just like from the factory, and this thing will fire right up. That's exactly what I want. So I want to use something that I have already, and I want to have something that's easily accessible because that battery is not easily accessible. So what I did is I went on good old Amazon and I found the adapter for this and started wiring it up and it did not work. This was a complete, utter failure. There is no other way to describe it. So that is fine. What I'm gonna do with this adapter, who knows? Because if it can't start a lawnmower engine, it really can't start nothing else. You know, maybe if I want to add lights to a snowblower that doesn't have its own charging system, this would be a good idea. Because when the battery dies, if you have multiple batteries, you will throw a, another one in. So what I did do, as you guys seen on that short that I posted, I just hooked up my Cobalt 40 volt battery and this thing lit up like a Christmas tree. Instantaneous start. Have never seen this thing start so much faster. So what I did is I went on Amazon and I found the adapter, ordered it, and we are going to install it. Now, this is a pretty good piece for the Cobalt 40 volt. Okay, but it's, it's, it's me and the 3D printer, so I just wanted to have metal in here. I figure metal would be a better support. And because this thing's gonna vibrate right like crazy, the last thing I wanted to do was have this flapping around in the wind. So we're gonna do the same exact thing. So I'm gonna go, um, there was just a lot of noise here today. 
So we're gonna go right to a voiceover of me just fabbing this up really quick. And then uh, we're gonna take this down to the home stretch. All right guys, so here we are on my crazy expensive workbench. We're gonna keep this nice and simple. This would have been really, really simple if one, I decided to cut this into three separate pieces and weld it, or two, if I had a metal brick where I could bend on my own. So right now I'm just taking some measurements of the battery and I am going to write that down so I could transfer it. So what I'm trying to do here is take measurements of the battery and I could start building my box. And now we're also taking measurements of the charger itself to see its dimensions because we do want to have enough metal to cover the base itself. And I also wanted to have some support on the battery as well. As stated before, I didn't want this thing flapping in the wind, causing excessive stress on the 3D printed charger that I bought, the converter, and then also the battery. Um, even though it's lithium, it, it, you should be able to shake and beat it. I'm trying not to have it shake too much because with my luck, it'll go away. So here we are, we take some measurements, some really simple math. We know that it is four inches. I want to go four inches up. That's going to go to the side of the mower. Two and a half inches is wide at the bottom of the cup. And then I want to go up two and a quarter that will fold over and reinforce that. So I'm basically cradling the, the 3D printed battery converter. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my measurements and I'm going to transfer it over to the sheet metal that I purchased at Home Depot. So here we are, we made our first mark. Um, so basically what I did is I took all three measurements and I added them together. And then I maybe added maybe a quarter to a half an inch on top of that because it's always easier to take away metal than add on. And don't forget, we're gonna be bending using some non-conventional tools. So I'm definitely gonna need some extra metal to make up the slack. So now I say, so here's the overall measurement and now I transferred over to the whip. Now here I am taking my straight edge, which happens to be a one lower blade, doesn't matter what tool you use, as long as it's straight. We're not building a spaceship, we're not building a high-end, matching numbers, Concorde, Elegon, Ferrari. We are literally making a simple bracket slash tray for a battery for your one mower. Now we're gonna join the two. And now we could start our cuts. So I was trying to keep this very basic and very simple. So as you guys know, I'm really big into snow blowers. I have a set of tin snips to cut um, rubber for the impellers. And here I am trying to use them with not much luck in the sense I was able to cut it, but once I started getting deeper into the metal, I was running into some clearance issues. And here I am, trying to keep it conventional, trying to bend the metal because it's easily bendable. If I could bend it one way, once I'm done with the cut, I could easily bend it back. That's the one thing I love about metal is depending on the strength it is, you could easily manipulate it, maneuver it whichever way you want. So I had to ditch the tin snips and I bust out the Milwaukee M12 cutoff tool. Um, this thing has been really cool for a nice little quick fab project. And here I am again on my expensive workbench with a nice bigger battery that unfortunately won't start my time master. Here I am just trimming up some metal, cutting it out and we could start taking shape and form. Of course I have my eyes and ears on too. Safety first. Don't let my expensive workbench fool you. because I'm using my expensive workbench, one of the downsides is I really can't clamp the metal and send it home. So I'm just gliding back and forth, getting deeper and deeper, and then I can finally send it home. I don't want the cutoff wheel jumping on me. So here we are. Now, 
Now, I'm just checking my measurements. Now we're double checking their measurements once again, and we are going to start marking our bends of how we're going to mark our bracket. And now we're going to be using the flat side of the metal, which I didn't cut. That will be my straight edge once again. Precision is key in something like this. Obviously by that big chunk of metal, you could see that big line that I did, that's basically one of those sides is going to be my big bend that's going to go from behind the battery up to the back of, up into the handlebars of the mower. Now we're going to be laying out my second line, which should be the base of the battery. So now I marked one line, now I know I have one point of reference. I'm going to be using the battery base to run up my second line. It doesn't get any perfect or easier than that. So now I'm taking my tin snips here and I'm going to be making some relief cuts where the lines are on each edge. So what that's going to do is that's going to make the bending process and train the metal to go in the direct in the direct place where I want it to bend. Yes, this metal is kind of thin. I probably could have gotten away without it. But again, we're building something simple, quick, and easy. I'm not trying to make this perfect. If this bothers you, you could try and bend it without relief cuts. If it does bother you, you could bend it, hammer it, and then weld them closed again. Again, this is a lawnmower, not a spaceship. Precision is questionable. So here we are. See how I had those relief cuts? Look how easy it was to bend that. And as you can see, I have a couple of bulges. I'm taking my body hammer and I'm laying everything nice and flat. So we just got done with one cut. And you can tell it's on my high end uh, bench vise where I mounted to. Uh, there are some clearance issues, but you know, we work around those. We get used to that. So we're gonna flip it the other way, try not interfere. Again, this is where I feel the relief cuts really come in handy. My vise doesn't allow the metal to go all the way through. It hits the bottom of the jaw, so we're gonna go uh, one side, we're gonna split it, and hopefully those relief cuts combined with the thin metal will make for a pretty clean bend, even though we don't have full support. And here I am. Because those relief cuts, I'm just pushing it down by hand. So those relief cuts on top of the thinner metal, like I said, very minimum skills and tools needed for something like this. Again, if we had a break, we could have folded this over real easy. And again, same process, trying to hammer it straight, trying to get it into shape. And it looks pretty good from here. See, look, hammering that one side, trying to get it a little bit straightened out. Get on the other side too. If that really bothers you, get your little welder and just give a couple of tacks on the outside and zap it in. But we're not doing that. So here you are with the final finished product. In a sense, before we strip it down and paint, Again, not on camera, but here we go. Just checking the fitment, it's good to go. Zip in my sheet metal screws and we are on our way. All right, so now that we have everything mounted and bolted in together, now we're gonna tie in these wires.
put this back. Clamp it. And clamp it. This is one of my favorite tools uh, for wiring. I'll put a link in the description if you want to buy these and this kit. So now we're going to match red to red. So I do have a little bit of extra here because remember these handles fold. So I wanted a little bit of extra. So we can definitely... We can definitely shorten these up a little bit. For sure. Because we could tuck this in here. Loom it. Loom it. And we'll be like right here. Now remember, we're still using the existing wiring harness from the factory. So in reality, right, this is already fused, so we don't need to add another inline fuse. We already have a fuse from the existing system. Now the reason why I'm folding this over is just to get a better crimp because I'm using yellow connectors because the wire, the gauge wire difference between the battery and the harness itself is two different gauges. It's not going to be an issue. So now let's get our proof of concept where everything is mounted. Let's take our cobalt 40 volt battery. Look at this, half a charge. And we will slide it in. Now we're live. All right, so now let's turn the key and fire in the hole. Look at that. Instant cleaning. You even heard the start. One more time. See, this is why I wanted to put this metal in because the metal was going to take all the absorption. It's going to be like a spring. We use 22 gauge from Home Depot. I don't want this to be too solid. I don't want nothing to break. I want there, there to be a little bit of play. 12 by 24, 22 gauge. Now, if you really wanted to stiffen up your battery location, you know, you would have made this back piece longer and then brace it from the side. But we're not doing that. This is a lawnmower. Its job is to cut grass. It's not a spaceship. That needs to be perfectly calculated. Very, very simple design. So let me just loom all that up off camera and I'll see you back in a little bit. All right guys, so here it is the next day. We'll go over the wiring one quick time, but before we just do this, guys, I just, I just can't get over this. I just, 
Why didn't I do this a long, long, long time ago? All right, guys, so let's go over the wiring one more time. We have it nice, tucked away, and loomed. So initially is, right, all these bolts come out and you disconnect your battery, okay? You're going to have the wires that come from that harness, which is right here. And these are the wires, black is negative, red is positive, that I ran. You can see my junction right here. I taught it right here. Wired them all the way up, up into the battery. And here is the fusible link. This is why we don't need to tap in a fuse. See right here? That's your fuse. Everything is nice and loomed. So when I get to a junction like a Y, I take my loom and I kind of overlap it. And then I wrap it up with tape. Here is through the factory loom. This is all factory. And here again to our second loom, here's that Y. And we're right here. I'm not sure if I want to add a zip tie right here or just keep it. And again, the important part, the one thing I wanted to do is keep the functionality of the one mower. Handles fold so we could still utilize the service position. Okay. And then we can go all the way forward for that compact storage if you needed it. Obviously it's not going to lay flat. If you wanted it to go further flat, you would push this up further. I'm not doing that. It's not necessary. It does not work for me in the sense that I don't utilize it folding it that way. So tell me what you guys think. I mean, listen, I don't care what you say. This project, the battery I already had, right? The lumen stuff I already had. I think this cover plate was 40 bucks. The Milwaukee one, that's research and development. Before you start doing this, your battery that you're going to use, okay, make sure it will start your lawnmower. And what you need to do is, you disconnect the battery, you're gonna have your two speed terminals, positive, negative. Connect those to your battery. Here at the cobalt, see there's a bunch of connectors. This one has positive, this one has negative. I hooked it up right into there, fire away. When I did it with the M12, you know, it was like a little sluggish, but then it fired right up. And then um, eventually, I tried doing it a third and a fourth time, and that was it. The battery just didn't have enough, enough gonads to get it going. So the Cobalt 40 volt is at. So if you guys have like a Milwaukee M18, Ryobi, definitely like an Ego, 80 volt, you know, that would, that would work. And then you go on Amazon and you type in your adapter. This adapter was used to like hook up to a power wheel and that's why i also wanted that cover plate because i just i'm not saying the person who built it but i'm using it for what it wasn't designed for and i wanted something more than plastic to hold this in nothing to break nothing to crack so um tell me what you guys think i'm going to save myself so much money because i have spent literally about $60 in batteries. $60 in batteries over the course of owning because I want to keep the electric start because I like that function. I like that function. I don't want to I don't want to crank on anybody's stuff. Look at this. I want to show I want you to show me a car that starts quicker than that. Mandingo has some crazy high torque mini starter. Doesn't even flip like that. And here's the problem, right? I have these other three lawnmowers, snowblower three lawnmowers. I gotta yank on all of these 
I gotta go home and yank on that? Absolutely not. All right, guys, drop your thoughts, comments down below. I'll put some links in the description to some of the stuff that I used. Um, and again, before you do this, I don't want you to waste some money like me with the M12. Get the battery that you're gonna think about using and plug it in and see if it'll start it. If that battery can start the lawnmower, then you can go forth about ordering the adapter or making something of your own to get it working. But again, guys, I just, I just can't get over this. I just can't get over this. Oh my God. Oh. Oh. I'm falling in love. I'm in love. I'm rambling. I'm out of here. All right, guys, drop your thoughts, comments down below. Yay or nay. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.